Over here we have red chilies with cheese. My God, it looks extremely spicy. I'm gonna try some of the, like some of the, I guess it's like gravy slash soup. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David Spin here, coming at you from Druksha Resort in Punaka, Bhutan. Today I'm super excited because I'm gonna take you to eat lots of food and we're gonna experience a festival. We're starting off right here at the hotel and we're gonna eat some traditional breakfast. We got some egg curry, we have some easy, which is like chili with cheese and we have some fried rice. Then after this, we're gonna go to the Punaka Fortress to experience the Punaka Festival, a multi-day festival. It's one of the most important festivals in the country and it takes place every year here in early March and after that we're gonna eat some delicious lunch oh man I am so excited I can't wait to start eating look at this chili with cheese oh my god this looks spicy so look at this egg curry it looks so good that's one thing I didn't know about Bhutan is that they love love spice here they're all about spicy spicy food so basically what they have is a lot of chilies right so you can see green shades right here best thing to do is just jump into the egg mmm look at that Hard-boiled egg that has been basically soaked in the curry. Mm. Oh yeah, I like curry. Mm. Yeah, they keep it on a low level of spices here, so it's like it's like a more like a, a watered-down soupy curry. A little bit of spices, definitely chilies in there. So I'm gonna mix some of that curry with the fried rice. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. And there's cheese and the fried rice. Wow. What a spicy breakfast. Mm. That's unreal. Mmm. That is basically like a spicy veggie side with cheese. Mmm. Oh, this is amazing. This dish is called Easy. As you can see, chilies, onion, tomatoes. You got a bunch. Put it here. Oh, I need all of it. You get some of this egg curry. Just put the curry over the rice. And then, do I like that? Mm. And in terms of like traditional breakfast here, this is it. That's what they were telling me. Like this is traditional as it comes. Spicy, everything, chilies. So this country produces red rice, which is a short grain rice. It's really, really good. And I like it because it's a, you have the influence of India and China in their food. Mm. In terms of level of spice, I'd say this is like a six. You know, yesterday I had like a 10, actually I had like a 15 with their, with their green chili cheese, which is unreal, but so spicy. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, it just makes everything here. The easy, the rice, and the curry. And right here, we have butter tea. If you guys didn't know, this is like their most famous drink. This is what they all love to drink, which is basically tea with butter, like straight up butter. But I couldn't even believe it because when you taste it, you're like, whoa, am I like, am I eating like a bar of butter here? Yeah, that's what it is. It's like melted butter. It's good, but you know, because I'm a coffee guy, I have to have a coffee. Black, no sugar, all day. As you can see, the egg has absorbed the curry. It is all for me, guys. And I'm probably not gonna eat for like five hours, so gotta fill up on some rice, some more curry, just drizzle it like that. And basically, we're gonna eat all the easy. You know, I didn't know that much about the food in Bhutan before I came. I obviously did my research, but I didn't know it was about this, like this much heat in their, in their dishes. I don't know what it is, but you know, mountain countries usually don't have a lot of spice. Here they do. Mm. Oh, that's good fried rice. Basically, the fried rice is like very light on vegetables and chilies. Mm hmm. Mm. The easy is the best. Basically, a chili salad. So this is a traditional Bhutanese breakfast. You have to try it when you come to Bhutan. All right, guys, let's go to the festival. Morning tea. Morning. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Did you have a good breakfast? Yeah, man. Amazing. Oh, Easy. Oh, oh. super spicy. 
<laughs> Did you like the fried rice? I loved it. Fried rice, egg, egg curry. Oh, so mm -hmm. good, man. Um, morning. Morning. Actually, the festival Punakha is for six days. Six days? Yes. And for the first three days, it's called as Domche, that has been finished on foot. And the Sechu started from yesterday. It will be the second day today. And you will be seeing a lot of people coming to the festival today. We visited yesterday, we saw like the ending of the first day and it was really really packed, easily 2,000 plus people. There were some tourists, I mean I'd say maybe 2,000, maybe, yeah. not so many right now. But uh, he said today is going to be a lot more, obviously uh, the more that the, the days get into the festival, the bigger it gets, right? Yeah. And yeah, we're just driving through the area right now, beautiful morning, wow, this, so we have rice paddy fields here. See some donkeys, some horses. Oh, this is like all farmland, huh? Yes. And the people are the semi nomadic people. The semi nomadic people, it is two hours day a journey to their valley. So most of them they live with the ark. And during winter, because of the harsh winter climate over there, they come to Punaka. And by March, they go back to their area. So before we get to the fortress, I want to get a great shot of it from here saying that here we can see the two rivers joining and that's where you have the best shot of the fortress wow on the right is the male river we call it pochu on the left is the female river we call it mochu pochu and mochu and that's it both rivers male and female river this is where they connect right there we have the fortress gorgeous fortress beautiful scenery around mountains I mean this area is incredible it's a little nippy right now it's like 45 degrees Fahrenheit oh nine in the morning uh oh <laughs> cars everywhere all right guys let's go to the festival I'm excited can't wait love this love festivals the name of the fortress is called as Pungtang Devi Chenmi Podrang which means the bell the palace of the great happiness. The coronation of the first king, second, third, till to the fifth king, the coronation was done here. Recently, in 2013, the royal wedding took place inside the fortress of Punaka. Before we enter the festival, we came here across the street to a mini market. Now, what is this market? So, usually this market, it happens during the festival. People, they think that the shopkeepers, they think that lots of people come for the festival. They will be able to sell their products. So, it's a small stall where it comprises of food, clothes, toy for the children and everything. They just feel that they could able to sell more during festival. So it's basically like a pop-up market. They have lots of food, they have peanuts, and they have you know different things from Buddhism. Like so they have Buddhas for sale, they have cups for sale, what else? Just like toys for kids. I mean it's a mix of things here, right? These are pretty awesome wine containers. I mean they're like uh, little jugs, right? Red, black, small, big. Hey dude, I want to buy one of these. These are cool. So you split it up with wine? Yes. Peach wine? Rice wine. Rice wine. Ara. Ara, rice wine. It's made locally, it's made at home. We just crossed the main bridge and now we're going to go up into the fortress and what we're saying is that around 10 a.m. they close the door and they don't open it for a few hours. So we have to hurry up and get in there. All right, here we go, here we go, let's go.
soon as we came into the fortress, as you can see, huge gathering, like three, four thousand people. It's actually a section set off for tourists and the rest of it is made up for locals. And where we stood, you can see like the center, the main square, and that section is the administration area, right? Yes. This is where we have all the head offices of the district. It's a monastic area. It's mainly for the monks. Punaka Fortress is the winter resistance for the monk bodies and the sea bearers. During summer, they go to the fortress of Timpu, and during winter, they come to the fortress of Punaka. Right now, there must be like 400 to 500 monks living here. The central tower, it's a five-story building which divides the administration and the monastic body. I'll show you the monastery. Inside this building, we have a room where only three people are permitted to go in. So they are the former king, the K4, the current king, and the present head of the religion, the chief abbot. Because in that room still we have the embalmed body of the unifier. So it did it back from the 17th century, the embalmed body. All these buildings here, what are they? Just part of the monastery, all yes. residential yes. No, no, rooms? No, no. no? They have a shrine inside, a shrine, a temple, and even here, in 2013, the royal wedding took place inside this one. And can you see the golden door here? In 1907, our first king, when the monarchy was started, the coronation of the first king was done inside this golden door. So it was on 17 December 1907. And 17 December is celebrated as the National Day of Bhutan. So basically the residential part is the other side. Here it's shrines. Yes. Right? So all this is shrines. I love the colors here, man. Beautiful. And this is all in Bhutanese, the, the language, no, right? No. no? It's what in is? Sanskrit, I would say. Is that in Sanskrit? Yeah. Man, it looks to me it looks something like Mandarin, it looks like something different. So even for the Bhutanese people like us, it is very difficult for us to learn or to read Sanskrit. So some of the monks, they could be able to read or write in Sanskrit. Dragons, there, I think that's like a lion Snow slash... Lion. Snow lion? Yeah. I was gonna say, it looks like a lion slash panda. So this is the main shrine and inside it, we have a statue of the Buddha, the second Buddha, and the unifier. The unifier was like the guy who unified Bhutan. Yes, right? he came to Bhutan in 1680. Actually, he is a Tibetan scholar. Okay. He came to Bhutan, he unified the country under one religion, that is the Tupacajupa religion. And he brought, like, Buddhism has been flourished all over Bhutan, so we call him the unifier. Okay, and then outside here, as you can see, lots of beautiful colors. Here we have dragon, right? Here yeah. we have the face of the dragon. Yeah. And then over there we have some gold pillars and lots and lots of imagery and colors. I mean, this place is just super colorful. Um, this is one of the things that's very different from places in China, like the Buddhism in China and the Buddhism yes. I've seen in Japan and South Korea. Yes. You guys use a lot of color in everything and all depictions. Yes. Everything we've seen so far here at the festival is basically showing us, you know, the founding of this fortress. 1637 you said, yeah, right? 1637. So 1637 it was founded and so it's singing, dancing, and they're just basically, it's sort of like an opera, right? They're telling a story. Obviously it's hard for, for us, you know, somebody that's a foreigner to understand it. Yes. You guys understand it though, yes, right? Yes, we do. So when you come to this festival, I highly recommend you get here early to get in front of the tourists because 
it's crazy it's just way too many people and you can't sit with locals you have to sit in the tourist area which is actually a great spot it's like front center right in the front but there's just too many people and you have to like fight to get a photo it's pretty crazy but uh yeah the festival was awesome i mean that's it for us so we're gonna go now to have some lunch uh, i think we're gonna get some like street food and take it to have a picnic or something i don't know exactly how we're doing it but we're gonna do it around here so let's go eat some spicy spicy food Bhutanese food oh who would have known it would be this hot so a little bit of a change of plan here guys um, unfortunately today because it is festival most of the people who do catering to have a picnic on the side of the river are closed you know they take the day off you know festivals this is what happens you know some some of the restaurants are closed some are open so what we're gonna do is we're going back to the hotel it's about a 25 minute drive back and then they're gonna make for us a few dishes that I haven't tried like spicy dried beef cauliflower and cheese uh, chili and cheese again because it's so good and it's so spicy so I have to try it one more time I really love the the other one this morning the, the easy 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 that was the best man that was like Easy. Yeah, it's like a salsa. Yeah. It's like a spicy salsa. Yeah. And whoa, look at this. I didn't see this yesterday. The way it looks now, all the mountains here is like a valley. That's all rice fields, right? Yeah. And by the way, if you're not into spicy food, you can also ask for no spice. Similar to like how you do it, like in Thailand, you ask for like no chili at all, and they just you know take off the chili completely. It's still really really good, but obviously if you want that extra kick, a little extra flavor add some spice some chilies so you have a lot of chilies up in these mountains huh yes the first chili from the western parts of Bhutanza grew have been grown here in Punaka and during winter we really don't have any places where we could able to grow chili so some spicy chilies we bring it from India the scenery is just stunning here all right so here we have it lunch so we have three main things okay so we have dried beef with chilies and like a rice noodle that looks really spicy over here we have red chilies with cheese my god it looks extremely spicy i'm gonna try some of the like some of the i guess it's like gravy slash soup mm. <coughs> super hot and over here we have cauliflower cheese so i'm gonna put a little bit of everything on my plate and we're gonna dive in grab that right there and this is the beef. Oh, so there's a lot of noodles on the bottom. Okay, you just stir it up a little bit. Mmm, this looks good. Lots of green chilies here as well. And I'm gonna get some of this regular white rice. So this is not from Bhutan, right? This is from India? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's from India. Wow. Super chewy. Not the flavor. The beef is a little hard. That's because it's dried. You know, but you have a nice fat right here. Yummy. Oh, super spicy. Nice green chilies. Now I'm gonna dive into the chili cheese. Chili cheese. What a combination. It's a little too much, huh? A little bit. The red cheese is actually lighter than the green cheese. Green cheese is really spicy. Mmm. Oh wow. The cauliflower is fantastic. Mmm. So the cheese is like melted but almost like liquefied. Like not melted like gooey, more like liquid. Mm-hmm. Mm. And what you have to do is get some of this mixed with the rice. to do is to get some of this sauce right here it's all over Ooh. the thing is that these type of chilies they sneak up on you you know and they tingle they make your lips tingle what a great dish I would suggest taking off the green chilies though it's too spicy they're really hot <laughs> Lots of cauliflower. That's one thing I like about Bhutan. There's a lot of veg here. In the winter, 
of this is definitely the cauliflower. If you're into veg and spice, Bhutan is definitely the country for you. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, this is fire. Mixing the green chili with some cheese, cauliflower. So this is like sort of like Thali style, right? So like if you've ever been to India, ever eaten Thali's, which are like, you know, serving up plates. This is how it is, right? You get a little bit of everything, and you mix. I think the best thing here is to mix with the red. Red's light. So in terms of what I loved here, cauliflower is the best, for sure. Nice cheese. Chili's, the chili cheese. This one's better than yesterday's because yesterday's is green chili, which is too hot. The beef, it's the dry beef is a little too hard for me. It's good, but some pieces are great. Some pieces are just way too rubbery. And that's lunch, my friends. I personally love the heat. I It's hard for me to eat anything that's like no spice. If it's like no spice at all, at least some pepper. That's it, guys. I hope you love the day. We started off right here at the hotel, having an incredible breakfast. Egg curry, with that easy, it was like that salsa spice. Spicy for breakfast, I mean, I, I never do that, but I definitely enjoy it. You have to come to Bhutan in early March to experience this festival. Punaka Festival, incredible experience. So colorful, lively, lots of music, lots of dancing. And then we came back to the hotel, had some lunch. Unfortunately, our plans to go to the river got canceled. But yeah, I still made up for it with some incredible food. Really, really love the food here. I mean, it's a big mix of non-veg, veg, and spices. Lots and lots of chilies. So if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Bhutan. With this epic view, who wouldn't want to eat here?